Welcome Joystick Justice League back to part three of our grand size, anything but short, debut episode of Shortlist, where we talk about what defines gaming greatness, naming down the top 15 characteristics of what truly makes a game legendary and lasting throughout the ages. We're down to the top three now, Joe, so let's wrap her up. Let's go with number three, a video game that created its own genre. Wow, you know, th th this is this is a very big one, you know. And, and uh, you know, the the two games that stand out the most to me on this list. Uh, no, actually, no, there's three, and that's Super Mario, Wolfenstein combined with Doom, and Grand Theft Auto Three. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Super Mario. I mean, here here's a game that that, that uh, you know, I would say started the pla the platformer genre and just Donkey wow, Kong I mean, was arguably the first. It was argu arguably the first, yeah, but uh, but I mean, here, here's a game with just just uh, timeless characters that everybody can relate to, and just fun game play. I mean, I mean, geez, I, I mean, I, I think almost every gamer that, that's been around as long as us can fondly look back on Super Mario. You know. So let's break it down then. Like Mario basically invent invented the modern conception of what the platformer is. I mean, we haven't really yep. strayed too far from the Mario formula. I mean, it still works today and. Rayman Legends and, and and Braid and Super Meat Boy and what have you. Um, so what? Let's okay. So Mario came out in '85. Mm -hmm. What made it so revolutionary? What made it so revolutionary? I mean, it, it was just it was it was such a. Uh, I mean, it was so it, it was different from other things that came out there. I mean, and I mean the, the characters. I mean that it, it, uh, it, it was it was. What about the gameplay? The, the, the gameplay, I mean, it, it just, it, it, it played, I mean, it, it was just, it, it's a hard thing to describe, I mean, it, was, it was just fun, you know, it just, uh, Mario just has this fun quality to it in all its iterations, you know, it just, you, you feel like it, it, you had really good control of your character, I mean, it just, it, at times it was hard, you know, it was just, it was another, just a very fun, but yet challenging experience. You know, at that point, really, I mean, the control was huge. I mean, the fact that yes, you could absolutely. stop at a dime, you could turn mid-jump, you could run and jump, you could do a short jump, there was, you could speed run a level. Power-ups, man. Like, you know, did we even have power-ups at that point? Like, the fact that you could don new suits, the fact that you had a, le a, a boss at the end of the level, warp yes. zones, hidden coin blocks. I mean, really, they were just throwing the... Miyamoto was just throwing the kitchen sink of design at us back then just yep. trying so many new things that either hadn't been done or hadn't been done properly and just really perfecting it in, in one game experience that can be played a million different ways you can speed run it you can explore it it's just, it's just there's just so many levels to that game and i think that's what truly makes it the definition of that genre yeah absolutely so you yeah, mentioned yeah. grand theft auto is another example that's that's huge it basically we all know that grand theft auto 3 basically created what we call today the sandbox game um, yeah. What made I mean, uh, so? Let's let's talk about like what, what were the factors that came together to make Grand Theft Auto the 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 behemoth it is today. I th In comparison I, I th to what had come before, I, I think uh, just uh, that the freedom to uh, I mean uh, it, it was there were some limitations, but it was the first kind of game that, that really gave you that sense of freedom to kind of do what you wanted. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, it was still bound. To some gameplay elements that they wanted to have. There in was there, a story I mean, you could play if you wanted to. Yeah, but but I mean, f for the most part, I mean, uh, I spent the most of that game not doing the story at all and just going out and just causing havoc in whichever kind of way I choose. Which is what most people uh, I know did. <laughs> exactly, and uh, that, that that was just the, the beauty and the simplicity of it. Giving player choice. Yeah. You know, it's just uh, again, it's just you know, not only creating a genre, but just. Remember the aspect. Remembering the aspect of play that you're not just telling a story, but mm -hmm. you want the, the, the character, to, the, the the gamer to actually play this game. Yeah, and it, it, it kind of gave birth to the, the idea of giving the player freedom, which you just said. For me too, like a big thing about Grand Theft Auto 3, and I've said this many times, is that at the time it really took so many other games that were popular and and basically pounded them into one soup. Like it took elements of Silent Scope which was big in the arcades at the time. I remember the mission with 8-Ball where he's on the ship and you have to cover him in snipe mode. It felt like I was playing Silent Scope. And then there were elements of Driver. There were elements yep. 
uh, of, uh, of just so many other games. And you, you especially see that now with, with Grand Theft Auto V, where it oh. takes elements of Need for Speed, it takes elements yeah. of like Max Payne, it takes elements of this and that, but it all works. It's like all these, they don't they don't shortchange any element in that world. Like every, it, it's happened you know more intuitively from every sequel, but really, it, it's not just it, it, there's no gimmick in that game. It's everything has a function and a place, and, and that's yeah. what really made it huge. Just you know, just the fact that um, you know it, it took a risk of. of taking all these disparate genres and blending them together where, where most people would say, okay, this is a mishmash of a mess, but it made it work, you know, and it was just it was just ambitious, really just taking advantage of, of the hardware that was available at the time, too. Uh, absolutely, and, uh, you know, it wasn't really, you know, it's something that I, I, I would imagine you know, they were probably thinking of doing, I mean, there was the, the first two Grand Theft Auto games, but it, it just it was another example of, like, just that uh, maybe they, the, kind of the hardware not really letting them execute that vision up until that point. Yeah, you know, and just you know, just not being afraid to take chances. You know, that's something Rockstar has never been afraid of, and that's why they're at the top of the game because they're not afraid to think outside the box. They're not afraid to test conventions of what's been done before and just flip them on their head, and that's why they're really at the top of their game. Um, but let's talk about a, like a genre that's really started to come about lately in, in the form of the the dungeon crawler roguelike, uh, the hardcore Dark Souls. I'd say not even Dark Souls. Demon Souls really started it, but Dark Souls has become like its own genre now. Everybody's trying to be the next Dark Souls now. So why Dark Souls? What what is speaking to people about Dark Souls? What is it offering that no other game like it did before? Like it, it's not like it's a new idea, the dungeon crawler. It's just that it's something else in the Dark Soul world, and that it's being copied now. Why? The, the idea of, of just the uh, the the, the the sheer difficulty and the hard corners of it and just the the, uh, the open-endedness of it and just the, the not holding your hand to go along. I mean, I mean, you really have to... This is the kind of game that uh, you have to really devote yourself to and, and go off and explore. I mean, it, it's the best example of a game that just doesn't guide you in any kind of way. You have to find your own path in this kind of game. Yeah, you know what? And it's, it comes goes back to what we were talking about before in the sense of being coming out at the right time. You know, like with Walking Dead, addressing concerns in the gaming industry in general. Dark Souls, like you said, does not hold your hand. It'll kick your ass. Prepare yeah. to die is the motto. People were complaining during the 7th gen that, you know, games were getting too cinematic, that they were getting too tutorialized, that they were holding your hand too often, that they're getting easy, that it wasn't like the NES days where you had three lives and two continues and that's it. You know, now it's like the game wants to be beaten. Whereas it's like, Dark yeah. Souls wants to beat you down. It's like they saw that and went, okay, you guys want a hard game? Boom, there it is. You know? And wow, I mean, Jesus, I mean, that, that there's a game that... that uh, <laughs> Be prepared, like I said, be prepared to die. It's the <laughs> sense of reward people get, though. It's like, why do people play yeah. these hard games? It's because once you, because you know it can be beaten. It's not like yeah. the NES days where you're playing like Back to the Future or Friday the 13th, where it's just programmed so badly that who <laughs> wants to fucking beat that shit? It's yeah. like you've, you've seen somebody beating it. There's a platinum that can be done. Yeah. Why can't I do this? And when you figure out how to do it, it's like the, one of the greatest feelings in the world. Yeah, you just you get the, the determination, like you said. You know it's not possible. And you're just like, oh, you know, you just you, get, you, know, you just you get you see that it can be done, and you just go, oh, damn it, I gotta match that. You know, it's like you know that that, that challenge, and boy, that, that that definitely ranks up there as, as probably one of the harder, if not, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you call it the hardest game ever made, but I mean, geez, one of them. It's, yeah, it's out it there. definitely ranks up there. Because you know what, man, it's it it, it treats the player with with respect. It actually assumes that the player has a brain and wants to try to succeed mm -hmm. without giving you too much but it's it's also well designed because you know it, you know to be truly hard and rewarding you've got those they take those their time with those games man they don't just churn yeah. them out it took a while for dark souls 2 to camp to come out like it, it wasn't it did it wasn't rushed out like they you can tell yeah. they they really perfected that game like they spent their time with it yeah, and uh, you know, hopefully that'll carry forward to other versions of the game, and that hopefully it doesn't become like a, uh, like a, unfortunately, what kind of like Assassin's Creed, you know, where it's like a yearly kind of a thing, and, and 
results in a watered down experience, which we talked about before, right? Yeah, I think the common thread with all these games we're mentioning for for category three here about creating your own genre is just the fact that you're you're it's 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 a little bit of prestige. The fact that you're taking other genres and just expanding upon them, melding them together, and creating this new fusion, and that that can that can happen into uh, years into the future there's so many game ideas you have but it, i think the key is is timing and realizing what and really listening to community like what's lacking what are people complaining about and doing the opposite absolutely and i think you got a new genre out of it so that's number three let's go on to number two top 15 characteristics to define legendary games we pegged the number two characteristic as the game is so perfectly designed and challenging that it stands the test of time so games that kind of fit this category, Joe? I mean, uh, one that immediately uh, I know is here, uh, Tetris. Okay, here, here, here's a game that took the, the, the puzzler, and I mean, to this day, I mean, this is still arguably w right up near the top of, of cult favorites. I mean, this is puzzle gaming done to perfection, in my opinion. Simple, complex, multi-strategy yeah pick up and play yes um, a, a test of intellectual strength again the what we we argued earlier is like when you want to bring a casual gamer into it it's it's not about seeing how fast they can mash buttons or or seeing how well they can follow a storyline it's about how well they can put their brain to work on a quick ex quick yeah. simple exercise and show you how smart they are yeah, and an, an example of it could turn in a, a casual non-gamer. I, I think somebody who, one of them that would pick this game, I, I think this could you know, teach them and actually motivate them to, to actually become better. I mean, it's a really, really good example of that. You know, a game that, that starts off easy but ramps up the difficulty and I, I, I think, you know, makes you better as, as you play it along. And, uh, you know... As it turns out, I mean, uh, I didn't know this for a long time. That that game <laughs> actually had an ending. I mean, uh, here's a game that, that uh, you know, I, I, I knew it wasn't going to be endless. But I mean, wow! I mean, that game got hard. I, I, I had no idea up until just recently. Actually, I did some research on this and found out that there actually was an ending for this. That's hilarious. Yeah. I've never seen yeah. that. Most people probably haven't seen that ending, but that's that's cool yeah. to know. Um, it's funny you mentioned like a, a game kind of making you a better person because you have like goal and and you stick mm -hmm. to it. Like, it makes me think of King of Kong, you know, when you're watching Steve Wiebe trying to find purpose in his life after the recession and losing his <laughs> job and trying to basically beat the top score for, for Donkey Kong, you know, and just, again, because the game was just so perfectly made and uh, just has so many different strategies and so many different ways of, of playing it. Um, so iconic and just such a simple idea, but just, 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 it just, there's no fat. There, everything just has a functional place yeah. you know that's that's the way i learned about like say great filmmaking like everything works that's what s separates yeah. the great movies from the lesser movies the great movies great mm -hmm. games from the lesser games is that there's no fat it's just like everything was planned and calculated as much as possible yeah and you know in another game I th that i know is i know one of your personal favorites uh on this particular one is uh, zelda why right. i created this category in the first place that was the immediate game i thought of zelda 3 link to the past i mean really I mean, you talk about perfect games. I don't think anybody's going to argue there. I mean, really. Nope. I mean, most people consider that. A lot of people would argue that was what's one of the greatest games of all time. You know, at the time, wasn't really doing anything extraordinarily new. And I was trying mm -hmm. to figure out. I was thinking, thinking to myself, like, what makes Zelda Three so amazing? Like, you know, obviously there were other RPGs out. Final Fantasy Two was out on Super mm -hmm. Nintendo as well. There was Fantasy Star on on Genesis. Uh, why Zelda Three? And it, and it was just the collusion of all these factors. The, the, that opening intro when you can, the rain's coming down on Link's house, the orchestral music, the the, the the use of color, the flawless play mechanics, the story, the the negative world, just just so yeah. much jam packed into this cartridge. It just it, it really seemed like with that, like it, it had just taken everything that had been kind of uh, attempted up to that point and just. Damn it, just perfect. Making it harmonious. Uh, oh my god, I mean, I mean, it, it, like you said, I mean, just, it, it's a game like it's a, I, I know for a fact that most uh, gamers that, that have been around for a long time would, would uh, I know this game is right near the top, as what some people would say comes closest to being a perfect game. Yeah, you're right, it's just like, it really is just, 
it's not necessarily trying to be anything new, but it's just to, it's just doing the best it can yeah. within its genre. But even then, like I mean, it did do new things. They were just very subtle, very you know, like little tropes that have been copied to this day by other RPGs that were really introduced by Zelda. I mean, that wasn't the game to introduce them. I mean, those mechanics were introduced on the NES, but just mm-hmm. it's it's kind of like what Mario World was to Mario Three. Yep. Some people, even though Mario 3 was really the watershed moment, Mario World is just a perfection of it that just takes it into the stratosphere. And it's it's hard to say it's the greatest game ever, but it's just perfect and, and enduring mm-hmm. and it just lasts. Like you can play Zelda 3 today and be rewarded and not feel like, oh, this is old. Like there are certain yeah. games that are still great, but they feel old. Kingdom Hearts feels yeah. old now. Legend of Zelda never feels old for some reason. Neither does Super mm-hmm. Mario World. Neither does Sonic the Hedgehog. Yep. You know, and carrying on to the same vein, bringing this genre into the modern day, Super Meat Boy. Yep. Okay, now here, here, here's basically taking everything what's made, what was great about uh, that style of game and brought it into the modern day and really and really kept that hardcore element and, and just uh, the, the tight gameplay. I, I mean, it, this really does feel, I think, to, to the, the modern generation uh, as kind of the their version of, of, of Mario. Because you said it was tight, Joe, because it was yeah. labored over. It was calculated. Yes. It's like making a great meal versus serving up something at Burger King. It's like a, a, it's like a, a Stanley Kubrick movie versus, really? you know, like any other hack job director. It's like calculated, trying to f- or achieve perfection, taking your time. And, yep. and just and like, and making it just a sublime experience where nothing is glossed yep. over. And it's not an overly long game. It really is. It's the right uh, fit. Qual- it, it really is quality over quantity. I mean, they, they, they could have just packed a bunch of levels on this, but no, they, they decided to, to go with a, a handful of, of re- just really solid levels in, in gameplay. I mean, I mean, it, it, this is uh, just, it, it's, like I said, it, it's not a long drown out thing. It's just, it's, uh, I mean, it, it, it's just it's one it been one of my favorite games lately, and really kind of just embodies everything about what was great in those previous generations. Again, because it's just like it's anything that that is going to represent a generation, like say like The Last of Us, kind mm-hmm. of represents the best of the seventh generation because Naughty Dog perfection. They they spent years making that game. They didn't rush it out, yeah. which is which is you know why say assassin's creed could be great but it's not in my opinion because it's just it's just watered down by throwing out a sequel every year and they don't obviously spend the time on it like they do with these other games you know like like that are labored over and you know so it it has a lot to say when when you really try to take a very uh artisanal approach to your, your game design you're not you're and if you're lucky enough to be indie you're not pushed by deadlines and, and stockholders, mm-hmm. but you're actually just allowed to create. That's that's where these these true masterpieces come from. But I mean, th- it, it, there's always some kind of like other element mixed in with it too. It's like even with Meat Boy Joe, it's like there's homages to older games. That's part of its charm because it takes mechanics from Mario, it takes mechanics from this and that into pastiche. Look at Mario itself. Mario was based on Alice in Wonderland. So immediately there's that familiarity too. There's that metatextual connection, right? It's not just mm-hmm. a game itself, but there's also something larger to it as well. That and, and same with Zelda. You know, whether it's based on like Nordic myth or what have whatever was going on in uh, Miyamoto's brain when he created those characters. There's just something larger than the text itself. Yeah, and, and that's something that I think really draws people in, into these games, or that little bit of an element that they're that they are familiar with. Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, that's number two. Long list, 15 reasons, well, 15 traits that truly define a legendary game, something into the ages. We are finally at number one. Joe, what is our number one trait? These are games that uh, that proved that they, they can appeal and unite all age group, races, and genders. Yes, a game that basically goes against barriers, breaks them down, unites us all as human beings. Let's name some of these ultimate games of history here that truly define us mm. as gamers united. Bum, 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 bum. Uh, right at the top of the list for me, again, Mario. Of course. Here's a game, like we said, 
that just, I mean, just in, in its characters, in its gameplay, is timeless. I, I mean, it was good then, and still it stood up through time, and to this day still stands up as a game that, I mean, appeals to all age groups. I mean, people, even, even younger game, gamers now, pick up this game and they go, wow, this is cool. Because, yeah, you're right, there's just so many factors, Joe. It's, it's not only great game design, it's not only, yeah, like that, that, that lasts through the ages. Like, again, like Mario is a game that could easily beat out most app games you get on your iPhone, even today, just because of the design. But it's also just the character, Joe. It's just fully fleshed out characters that are drawn meticulously. They use those cartoon curves that make them appealing to children and, and, and make them, there's a lot of curves, like a lot of roundness to, to those images. I would love to get like a, an actual art historian to break that down, like what that means when you're when you're seeing these characters. There's something about uh, Mario, and, and it's just so odd, like an Italian plumber with a mustache. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, just it, said, and it appeals to girls, to boys, yeah. to old ladies, to it doesn't matter what color, or race you are, or, or sexual orientation. There's, it's like there's almost a little bit of Mario in all of us, you know. It's it's that, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's 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 like you're saying, Joy. It, it has something for everybody, and even yeah. when you're a kid, you can get something new out of it when you're an adult. Like maybe you probably sucked at it as a kid, but you just liked it because it was cute or fun. And then when you get older and you're used to game mechanics, then you could start speed running and doing things you couldn't do when you're yeah. eight years old, which kind of makes to me like the Bugs Bunny of video games. It's like you get something out of it when you're a kid and then you get something new yeah. out of it when you're a kid, when you're an adult. Yeah, I think just the fact that he was kind of like almost kind of like in every kind of man. I mean, like you say, he was an, an Italian plumber, right? I mean, I mean, I don't know, quite. I mean, I don't think I, I know that many Italian plumbers, but I mean, I, but I mean, you, you, you feel like that 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 sense. I mean, it's just that there wasn't anything really kind of special about him, but he was doing these really special things. And, and it's a positive experience, Joe. I mean, really, yeah. Bowser may be the enemy, but he never dies. He always comes back for another battle, and you know, yeah. it's it's almost like even the Koopa Troopas have a place in this universe. They're integral mm -hmm. to the, the the makeup of this ecosystem, which is why there's just a lot of love in this game. It's not violent, it's not bloody, which is again why it's easy when your kids are growing up and you're a gamer, it's the easiest thing to get your kids into and, and not have them like playing something violent or bloody, like, oh, here's Mario jumping on Goomba's heads and, and eating yeah. mushrooms and oh shit, it's a drug dealing simulator. No, no, it's Mario, it's Mario. <laughs> but you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's like Mickey Mouse or, or Bugs Bunny, something in that art, man, that just, they, they just got right, you know? It's just, a, it's just a, it's just a, it's a, you know, I guess, I guess for for artists, I mean, they, they they can kind of figure this out a little bit more. But I mean, it was just it was just a perfect marriage of, of character and story and, and gameplay. I don't know really any other way to kind of describe it. And I think it's just again because you, you don't want to if you want this kind of wide appeal, it's such a tough line to tough line to, to skirt something that's going to appeal to adults and children I, I think the key is that yeah it's got to have meat for the adult mind to, to grasp onto but it, it's got to be I don't know is it cute or is it just family friendly like what is it Joe that uh, if, if somebody if you somebody asks you how do I make the next Mario like what what, what advice would you give them I mean, wow that's, that's quite, that's quite a question. <laughs> it really is you know yeah, what did Mario do? Or what, did, what did Mario do so right to unite us all? Oh my God! I mean, I mean, it's just it, it, it's uh, like you said. It, it's not uh, it, it's not uh, violent, but but I mean, it, you know, uh, what's another good example I, I, I can think of uh, when it comes to this kind of thing? I think even some of the, like the, some of the Pixar movies, just the the, the way that the, the the humor is done. It's it's, it's it's such an intangible thing, like, like to to appeal to such a large. Uh, Okay, I'll give you an example here. Like, Pixar movies, great example. Those use a lot of double yeah. entendres, right? So yes, that's a good point. Yeah, it's funny to the kids, but there's also maybe that latent Something. sexual humor or that yeah. auto pop music reference or movie reference that only the adults in the audience are going to get. But yes. the, the, but the, kid, the, the stuff that is cute meant for the kids isn't so watered down and stupid and vapid that it's going to drive yeah. the adults screaming out. But at the same time, yeah. it's not so over your head that the kid's going to get bored. And yeah. I don't know if there's really, and I mean, that's a tough question to even ask you. That's why I was kind of laughing when I asked you, because really, how do you explain that? I think that's just yeah. something that, 
it's, it's, there really is no advice. I mean, that's just something that comes around once in a generation. I think you, yep. you've either got it or you don't. I think the only thing you can really do is just try to be true to your fans and to yourself, and I think the honest idea will come out. Let's let's uh, <laughs> let's think about another more modern example uh, yep. of a game that really unites people, Joe. I'd say that's Minecraft again. Really, I mean, that's yes. cross all types of borders. I mean, it's not just a kids thing. You see adults building the state of Denmark recently. They, there's like literally they've recreated Denmark in Minecraft now. Like we, we've got adults playing this just as much as the kids do. Why, Joe? Like why 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 is this okay for adults to play? It's a kids game, right? Why why are adults playing this? I, I, I think the explanation for this is actually very simple, and, and that is going to go into something that this might sound a little strange to, to people, but I, I think you'll get this, is the Lego reference. Okay, I mean, here here's uh, an example of what you could call a, a kid's toy that, that, again, appeals to everybody, yeah. right? To, that's the fact that you could build something from scratch using your own imagination. That's what this is about. It's just letting you play. I mean, maybe that's as simple as it gets. Maybe we finally found it, that definition we were trying to search for a few minutes ago. It's just yeah, the idea of just let the person play in a well-designed world. And that's really what Mario's about too, Joe. It's, it's just like, yeah. you know what? There's a million different ways to play Super Mario 1. You know, there's, you yeah. don't, there, there's a million ways to play Minecraft. It's all, it's, it's a million ways to play Journey. There's a million ways to play Grand yeah. Theft Auto. That's what makes these games what they are. It's just, at the end of the day, it allows you to play. And it does it well. <laughs> it, it does it very really well. Really fucking well. And in, in Minecraft especially, I mean, here, here's, uh, I mean, obviously there was a lot of development and everything with this, but, but I mean, it, it's such a, oh, it's such a simple but complex idea at the same time. But like to, to just basically, you know, like I said, for lack of a better term, it, 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 to the average person might just look at like a Lego simulator. But I mean, it, it just it allows you to be so creative and to just do whatever like we talked about the sandbox kind of game but i mean this just takes it i mean just it, it, it's there there's really no kind of limit here to what you can create and and to to, to, to see and, and like interact with other people's creations and, and to i mean just that there's so many facets to to, to minecraft it, it's it's a game that that, that I, I think right up there with mario will stand the test of time for a long time and, but that's the thing like why do at the in the end, Joe, like why do we why do people create things? Not only just for self expression, but because they want to be seen. So that's the other mm -hmm. thing that really defines these games is that they enforce the social. Whether it's sitting together on a couch, give trading secrets on Mario and, and giving strategies, or it's you know, getting split screen on Minecraft on the Xbox three sixty and, and testing out each other's contraptions and, and destroying mm -hmm. each other's bunkers. There's a sense of social in that, and that's why World yeah. of Warcraft is easily in this category as well. Absolutely. Another big game that's designed well, that has yeah. intriguing characters, gorgeous, lively graphics, and, and it really enforces a new type of social. Yeah, and, and I mean, it's a world activity. that's constantly growing, too. I mean, uh, that you can well, literally I, live in. I wasn't expecting uh, this one. When it first came, kind of came out, I, I thought, you know, there was going to be a World of Warcraft. But I, I didn't expect all the additions and just how big that, that this world has actually become. Did you play World of Warcraft at all? I, I, I played a little bit of it. I, I, it was Unfortunately, that came around the time when I, I couldn't really afford to have a good internet connection. So, I, unfortunately, I did miss out on a majority of that. But I, I, I see the the appeal and why this well, what, is so well, loved. There's a lot of MMOs out there, Joe. So, why why is it... And people still go back to World of Warcraft. Like, is, is mm -hmm. it... You think it's... Is, is it the universe? Is it, what's it, What is it, like, that you it's see? It's the... Yeah, it, it's just the, the ability that... that I mean, it's a, it's a, it's not really tied to like there isn't like a story kind of like bogging it down. It, it just it feels like a very open like again kind of like in the Minecraft theme, where it's just it's just a very open experience that, that everybody just goes in and uh, has their their own experience and can create their own experiences. That's right, and that's the thing. There's so many different types of representation. I mean, there's so many different yeah. types of classes for every type of personality type that's going to come into this game. Exactly. Um, male or female characters, uh, different races, different colors, uh, and, 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 and it skirts that line too that we were talking about before with games like Plants vs. Zombies, XCOM, um, taking 
find a nice middle ground, an intuitive middle ground between the hardcore and the mundane, and, and making that mm -hmm. a, like an accessible media experience. That, it, like you said, I mean, most anybody, regardless of race, color, creed, age, can find themselves somewhere in World of Warcraft, or they can create themselves somewhere in Minecraft, yep. or they can find somewhere to express themselves in something like a Mario. So, because it's just so many different ways to play it. So, I think that's that kind of. Wow, that's a pretty exhaustive uh, list of what truly makes games legendary. I mean, I'm sure we've just skirted the surface. I mean, there's so many other examples we probably haven't covered here, but I think that's really like a working list. If, if you're a developer trying to like think of like, what's the next big thing? Like if, you, if you're wondering, okay, games aren't original anymore. They're kind of hackneyed now. Well, what, mm -hmm. what made these games in the past so great? It, and it's not just because they're great games, but it has to do with the time they were in historical context reacting what other things Joe like like as a sum like really what was the games we talked about today why why are these so great you know and looking right at the top of this you look at, at these games that that, uh, that uh, we're putting right near the top they, 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 these are games that aren't uh, they're, they're not rushed out they're not uh, too confining of, of an experience these, these are games that are very uh, yeah, I mean, these games obviously take a long time to make, even these ones. But they're not, uh, they're, they're not too... Some of these, uh, there's an overarching story to, to some of these, but I mean, it, it's not... Uh, it's, it's, they're very open experiences, and uh, it's not... Uh, you know, there's so many of these games that, that just follow too, too rigid of a, of a, of a story. They're, they're either too short, or they, they come out too often. These, these are games that, uh, you know... They dare to be different. Yeah, exactly. I think that's that's really the common thread. Yeah. Like even look at Minecraft. You know, in an age of hyper realistic graphics and crazy yeah. polygon counts, we got a pixel Simpl art beauty block and game. Beauty and some beauty and simplicity, man. That's what it, it really is. Just being honest and true to why we play games in the first place. But yeah. again, just just being cognizant of, of what's lacking out there. Like I was watching a documentary on Mark Cuban the other day, and he said that his whole philosophy was like, okay, I looked at everything that had been done. Before I said, well, what people aren't doing, what they're afraid of, is the future, and that's yeah. it. Like, and it look, Mario, you know, a, a reaction to the video game crash of '83 and all the shitty games that uh, badly programmed games to see something that was so lovingly perfected. That's just one example of one thing. So I think that's really, I mean, like we said with that hard question I asked you before, if if you really wanted to give some advice to somebody, I'd say, just, just, uh, just, just take your time, be passionate, and treat it like a great meal, or, or. Or an epic film, just just don't rush it out. Just just treat it like any great piece of art. It takes time, it takes passion, and honesty, really, and just an, an, an appreciation for your audience, and an awareness of what hasn't been done before. And I think you've got maybe the next uh, Angry Birds on your hands there. Yep. All right, so that's our debut, not so short, short list <laughs> of the top 15 characteristics that define legendary games. Greatness defined. Stay tuned for more con and content as usual. We've got uh, other new shows in the pipeline, as well as new episodes of Joystick Justice League Battle Arena and Rage Quitters. We've got lots of breaking news coming up. So many new games on the horizon. Mm -hmm. I'm Mike Fricios. I'm Joe Moran. And uh, support indie games developers, journalists, broadcasters. Peace, guys. Game on. Game on, guys. <laughs>